back again back again back again what up y'all another thing i want to talk about today y'all is uh you know alcohol is never the answer as a lot of you guys know is that i um was sober pretty much all of 20 22 23 about 11 months sober had a relapse got sober again for four or five months and then relapsed like two and a half months ago and had like a month and a half where i was sober for a couple weeks and drinking and stuff like that um and I just wanted to make this video because I've had way more sobriety than I've had of using in the last two years, which I'm very grateful for. And I've learned a lot. And I realized I wasn't going to be one of those people that just gets sober like that. It's been a process. It's been 10 years. It's been almost like eight. Yeah, I would say like six, seven years of me um, trying to figure out this that I realized that I wanted to change. And I've had a lot of success and I've had a lot of failures. Um, but I just want to make this video because alcohol whatever your drug of choice is for me it's alcohol and coke but it's always primarily drinking that it just that's what it is and what i realize is when i drink now you guys like it doesn't feel the same like all the years of drinking i've been drinking for the last 10 years it doesn't hit my brain the same like i don't get as euphoric it almost puts me in a stupor and i feel i sometimes it almost makes me feel like just out of it like i don't like i stop the feeling doesn't feel that great anymore and um like I was at the bar the last time I drank um, and I was sitting there by myself and I was just isolated. Like I got to the point where I drank, it was like, I never been that guy where I would just go get a fucking 12 pack and sit in my apartment. And that's what I had been doing. And I'm like, man, this is so fucking miserable. Cause like none of my friends I used to party with really want to fuck with me anymore because I'm the dude who went to rehab. So I have like my core group of few friends that still mess with me, but even they are worried about me, you know? So like I would just go drink by myself on my relapses. Cause like, I didn't want to worry any of my friends and everyone else didn't fuck with me anymore. And, um, I'm almost grateful for that because I experienced a lot of loneliness and a lot of pain. And one of the reasons I couldn't stop drinking in the beginning is because I really, love the party i was the social guy i was at the club every weekend at the bar i had a hundred people that i knew 200 people that i knew i used to throw a parties i used to rent a warehouse and we'd have a dj and speakers and it would be after hours and everyone knew me and the club security guards would come and they they would the dudes who ran the clubs would come and do my security and like i was i was the party guy for a while and uh so i've been there i've been that dude i've been the social dude and now I'm that dude that was in his apartment by himself and no one's calling me, you know, no friends. And I'm just sitting there drinking and I'm just like, man, this shit is not fun anymore. And when I would drink initially, it's because I'm trying to hide from like this depression or something. And like when you realize that when you do that drug or when you do that drink and that shit literally just makes you feel worse, then you're like, OK, like I'll do whatever positive things I need to do to not do this because like even today it's like i felt some of the you know we're, we're emotional human beings we have we go through different emotions throughout the day and what i realize is that you just have to ride things out if you're someone who tends to you know feel more emotions sadness you just have to learn to sit with it and ride it out and literally do everything you can to make yourself feel happier you know going on walks meditating like at least try a lot of people that are stuck in their depression and all that stuff they don't even want to try at least try you know because those drugs are just gonna they're just gonna leave you in even more pain and ruin so it's like i used to tell myself man it's like man if you're gonna do this drug you might as well just go kill yourself because because it's just gonna make you feel like you want to die now i'm not saying people to do that but i'm just saying like addiction starts in pain and it always ends in pain and um this is a 10 year 10 year journey with alcohol for me and the cocaine was about a four year journey five years i started that later when i was 28 29 and so i'm 34 and so I had a, where I'm getting at with that is um, even with the Coke, it's like the last time I did that, I was just like, man, I don't like the smell of this shit. I don't like the taste. I don't like the high. I don't like the paranoia, the depression. When I first started doing Coke, I was like, oh my God, what did I discover? This drug is fucking amazing. I didn't know about all the bad shit about it. You know, all the fucking shit it's cut with, all the dangers, all the, if I knew the future that I had when I first ever did it, I'd never would have fucking touched it, you know? Um, but it's just got to the point for me where those, those drugs just don't do it to me. And if I'm being real with you guys, I had a childhood friend who's like a pro skateboarder and, uh, he came over and drank with me and, uh, uh, you know, we were drinking and then, then he, he was pulling, he pulled out meth and he's like, Oh, check this out, man. I'm going to hot rail this meth. And I'm just like, bro, you can't do that in here, man. You need to like go in the bathroom. Like, I don't want to like. 
I never had him over again after that. You know, I care about the guy, but I'm like, dude, man, like this is a friend of mine who was the, the top skateboarder in our town, but he had some trauma. He lost his mom to cancer when he was like 20 and he's never been able to rebound that off that. And he told me that he started taking her uh, cancer like opiates and that's how he got addicted to opiates. And then he switched his addiction to meth. But, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm like, damn, this kid I knew was smoking meth and this other girl, the girl that I was dating was smoking fentanyl in my bathroom. I'm like, damn, that's two people that I've known my whole life and they're in my apartment using that drug. And I'm just like, what the fuck, you know? And I, of course, I never touched any of those drugs. And I told them both, you can't ever do that shit around me. And uh, that was the last time those people did those things um, in my place. But uh, it's just a reminder is like, I seen my friend and I seen his potential. This dude should be, he should be a pro skater boarder at the fucking X Games. But because of his addiction, he's, he's a shell of who he should be. And that is the sad fucking thing, you guys. Um, about addiction is that it doesn't give a fuck. My dad was a pro drummer. I think he had a scholarship to some beautiful music school when he was 18. Had all these opportunities. Um, he knew Jason Newsett from Metallica. His dad was a famous jazz musician. And now he's 60 years old and has nothing. He's homeless and a drug addict. For what? You know? Yeah, he's in pain. Yeah, he's in trauma and all these things. But like, yo, I don't care how much pain you're in, your trauma. I care, but I'm telling you, like, no matter what you're going through, that is not the way to deal with it. I don't care how hard you have to fight using those drugs and using all that shit. It just makes your life even harder. And, you know, some people are so afflicted, I get it, or maybe they don't feel like they have a choice. But I'm telling you, there's always a fucking choice. I have friends of mine that were full-blown addicts to fentanyl and meth that are just took a year sober, you know. So it can be done, but you do need help, you know. And where I'm getting at here is just whatever the drug, it doesn't help. And I seen my girlfriend, you know, we haven't really been close since we, you know, we weren't really in, haven't been in each other's life since we were teenagers and, and kids. And, you know, we've seen each other here and there and just seeing her mind and how her mental health is deteriorated and how she's just not thinking straight and how like, I'm just like, damn, what happened? You know what I mean? And it's like, you smoke opiates for, 10 15 years your brain is not the same my dad's brain is not the same even me with my little cocaine use and alcohol my brain luckily i'm still all here but i'm not as sharp as i was but when i get sober you know i start feeling back to myself but some of these other drugs is chronic use it really it really takes uh takes a part of you from you and, it, and it's it's a tragedy you know and so i just wanted to make this video to inspire anyone out there just to know that um if you're starting in your addiction or you're at the end of it or in the middle, just know that like eventually this shit's not going to be fun and hopefully you're still alive before it's too late. And there's there's other ways to do this. There's other ways to enjoy your life. Sobriety should be, sobriety to me now is my high. And that's how I was when I was younger. I had to think about my younger years and all the years I played sports and music and all the things that made me happy and realize like, yo, uh, that was a great time. And so, like, it's funny, I'm 34, but I'm trying to get back to the 16-year-old me who spent all day in the studio and who was working out and playing football all day. And um, I've done all those things throughout my adulthood as well, but I've also slipped and not been as um, consistent with some of those things because of the addiction that I've struggled with. And so I'm just trying to get back to that version and on a whole other level. Um, so, yeah, that's all I really wanted to say today, and I just hope all you guys out there who are struggling just keep fighting i appreciate the subscribers we're about to crack a thousand subscribers which is huge i started this channel a couple years ago um well really about a year well yeah almost a couple years ago and so we're starting to really reach people and it's given me purpose um because you know talking about the shit we talk about is there's shame in it you know there's shame in it there's nobody wants to talk about this dark stuff but i just want to let you guys know that i'm here to make this community i hope you guys talk to each other on the comments and just know that you know in some weird way we're all connected no matter where you're at in the world we're all connected and you're not alone and i know a lot of us who struggle with addiction we have core loneliness and i just want you to know that you know the person who made you the god who created you loves you and you are enough and you're good enough and uh, we're going to get through this so take care